بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم ما بعد الدعاء سلاح المؤمن دعاء is the weapon the artillery the munitions of a believer it is our first line of defense and protection in realistic terms and scenario we need to believe in asbab the means of dua more than any of the asbab and means of dunya we are not negating dunya or utilizing dunya but it's a matter of yaqeen in the heart and based on that yaqeen will a person be able to maximize on his dua like a person jumping from a plane believes in the parachute why would somebody do something so dangerous and risky because he has yaqeen that his parachute will protect him do we have yaqeen in allah and his protection a diver believes that he can go under the ocean because of the yaqeen of his oxygen tanks do not we believe that allah can sustain us and look after us and fulfill our needs even a bungee jumper believes in a thin piece of rope a person in pain believes in aspirin panado and painkillers a person security personnel soldiers believe in their weapons a person in distress believes in the context and the people around him to solve his problems why do the people of iman not have yaqeen and believe in the zat of allah jalla jalaluhu if a person has yaqeen then he will turn to allah he will ask allah he will revert to allah he will have connection with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what is the sign we don't spend enough time in dua a person can spend 8 10 15 hours of his day daily 365 on sustenance for his risk 7 11 at late how much time do we spend on the khaliq of risk thus is time given for risk how much time do we need to give for the khaliq of risk so we don't have the time we are too busy secondly if you know someone well based on your relationship you will know their capacity so if it's a friend who is a street sweeper you know his capacity so you're going to ask him accordingly if your friend is the president of the country how will you ask him a person who has yaqeen on the sifat of allah and the treasures of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then he will know what to ask from allah he will believe in allah he will turn to allah somebody is your neighbor and you send for some honey he'll send you one spoon of honey he is a little bit generous he might give you in a bowl honey he is very generous he'll just give you the bottle of honey which is very rare but if your neighbor is the king he's going to send a drum full of honey So when we have yaqeen in the zat and sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we will know who Allah is and that is when a person will turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he knows who Allah is and he knows the power of Allah when a person is devoid of this then they're not going to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they don't have yaqeen in the treasures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala secondly your relationship and strength to get work done So if an acquaintance is your brother to a close friend from childhood to a stranger now you somebody close and somebody that you know you will ask without doubt did my work well get done and if it's a stranger you know it's done so if a person has to look in connection with Allah his relationship with Allah is so strong then he knows he'll get his work done there's no matter of doubt so people have mastered asking makhluk the creation we've not mastered asking khaliq the creator we are striving for our degrees and we get in those titles we are striving for our black belts our trophies our masters everywhere we get in accolades who is there to get the accolade the masters the gold medal what allah why because i'm too busy i don't have time so we've left the original allah for the fake and number 3 depending on the status of the beggar 
So our uh, Mishaik say the world is full of beggars. The small scale beggars who are on the street and the big scale beggars who are on Wall Street with the banks. We are all beggars just on different streets. So Bakaulan Buzruk, the modern day beggar, is not the person on the street. He is rich, he is wealthy. He doesn't owe anybody anything. He is debt free. The real beggar is the one who has the best cars, the best houses, the best clothing, the best of everything, but he owns nothing, zero. Actually, he owes everything. He's in debt. So day and night, we are people overnight. Because he has declared war with Allah. So this is the extreme. For example, a person takes out insurance, now we're not getting into the masla, whoever uh, your mufti is, ask your mufti, go to the ulama, ask them. But just the fact that a person has taken out any insurance, it is type of a betting. And you are betting that everything must go wrong. And they are betting that nothing goes wrong. Now we'll have to see who wins the wager, who wins the bet. Secondly, a person knows he's covered, I'm sorted. So when a person knows he's sorted, there's no amal, there's no ayatul qursi, there's no bismillah before the amal, during the amal, after the amal. There's no ihsas. The vehicle left, didn't tell the driver, did he read salat today, did he need to do often traveling? Ah, it's insured, if something happens, don't worry. Insurance will cover it. So our amal, the amal of the ummah gets weaker. And the dua of the ummah gets weaker. The tawajjuh to Allah gets weaker. Means all the sifat that we should be acquiring, and accomplishing is lost. Number three, if something goes wrong, normally a person will turn to Allah, now he turns to the broker. And number four, definitely we will be tested. And when the test comes, then Allah makes people like gold to be purified, goes in the furnace and it becomes pure. The gold says, hey, you know what, I don't want to be going in the furnace. Or the diamond says, I don't want to be in the, the ray of the laser. So you're not going to shine how you're supposed to shine because you didn't want to go through the turbulence. So sometimes turbulence gives us a, a, a propulsion in dunya and akhirat, but we don't realize it. So we need to be beggars in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and based on the beggar, and who is begging to, there's different scenarios. We need to get this yaqeen in the zat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they say there were three beggars begging on Wall Street. So the first beggar wrote beggar on his broken cup. In the whole day he waited in the hot sun, he received $10. So second day another beggar came. On his cup he wrote beggar.com. So after one day he received hundreds of thousands of dollars. And he got an offer to float an IPO on NASDAQ. So on the third day, another beggar came and he wrote on his cup, eBeg, like e-commerce, eBeg. So Microsoft, IBM, HP sent corporate vice presidents to talk to him about strategic alliances. And they even offered him free hardware consultancy. In addition, it was also reported on Fox, CNN, CNBC, all the major news networks that eBeg uses 95% Oracle technology and that I2 announced the launch of Beg Trade Matrix, which was a B2B industry portal offering supply chain integration in the beggar community. When this whole exercise was finished, he was worth millions of dollars. So one word changed everything. Do we know the words that we need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do we need to know methodology if we made effort in that direction so that we can be billionaires in dunya and akhirat? So effort needs to be made in this line. And in the path of Allah, du'as are accepted, the, the different places where du'as are accepted. So uh, Muhammad bin Munkadir once went out in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a jamaat. And uh, the jamaat, jamaat is going to the path of Allah. So, they were, they were, if we say in English, listen, they were desirous. 
ashtahi jubanan they were desiring cheese those is cheese was the the delicacy of the time so muhammad bin munkadir uh, uh, he heard this so he said istat'imuhu yut'imkum if you want something you know path allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam why you in time fa innahu la qadirun ala kulli shay allah is power everything so for the alkum they made dua they were traveling and on the road they found cheese ready made cheese so some people you know you got different strokes for different folks so those days a delicacy was asl so somebody said look i know asl and you know it now honey i'm listening for honey so he said fa inna alladhi at'amakum jubnan ha huna qadrun alaykum aslan the bean that gave you the cheese can give you anything else and also so seek it from him he will give it to you but they alkum they made dua as they were traveling the road they found jars of honey they found honey on the road wa shukuru and they make shukr to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so in the path of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala duas are accepted where those moments and places where i can capitalize and get my dua accepted they say there was uh, in one area where there was war between the muslims and the kuffar and the muslims were in this land so the king decided that the muslims have camped here and uh, it's an opportunity to trap them so we will plan it such that they cannot escape they will, their resources will be depleted and they will die out of hunger and starvation so fahatu bihim so they surrounded them and it was very hot and the supplies ran out so they started doing amal and they made dua and as soon as they finished their dua the cloud started gathering and it started raining and they were collecting the water and filling their containers and they fulfill all their needs and their requirements when the king seen this he told his people let's leave game over for allah la aqtul qauman saqahum allah min as-sama wa ana anzur let's leave now i cannot fight combat a nation whom allah gives drink and fulfills their needs from the heavens while i witness it from myself this is not third party stories i am seeing it in front of my eyes we don't stand the chance so the places then have a relationship with allah that you can ask the friends of allah you have not been asking for dunya because it's very less like they said you got three wishes what you ask for use your wishes well we don't know when our dua is accepted so we need to use it well the friends of allah don't ask for dunya they ask that is what is the most valuable commodities in allah's treasures i need to ask for that say so once a muslim khalani he entered his house he made salam and it was his routine and uh, he used to make takbir his wife used to make takbir and uh, he used to eat so one day he came he made takbir his wife didn't reply she didn't reply to the salam and he found no answer so this is very strange and the lights were switched off and the wife was sitting and uh, not saying anything so he said malaki what's wrong something wrong bad day moody day things are going wrong today tell me what's wrong didn't they didn't go well so she said and nas bikhair wa anta bi muslim she said can uh, it's fine no problem how are you and just by the way you know if you had to go to muawiya fa yawl lana bi khadim so you know you can give us some assistance some aid give us some money a stipends so you really got the news you know generally if a person is in the wrong company they'll spoil the owner's mind likewise employees you get a new employee in the wrong company spoil them new neighbors new friends spoil them so allah man afsada ala ahli he made dua allah that person that disrupted my wife's temperament and mindset blinded person so previously before that uh, was another lady who came and put her up to it and told her why don't you tell your husband you're living a life like this you're so poor like this like that many times people go in jamaat oh your husband left you they gone out persons uh, go one in jamaat oh how can your husband go so long oh even for performance so long they put people up so this lady uh, in her house she became blind 
So when she realized it, she said, Inna lillahi, I am blind. So the news got to the wife Abu Muslim and that lady came. فَلَمْ تَزَلْ تُنَاشِدُهُ She continued begging and begging and begging and say, please, my mistake. So then he realized she was sincere. فَدَعَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ فَرَدَّ عَلَيْهَا بَصَرَهَا Allah returned her vision. Allah returned her vision. So that's the power of dua. So we need to learn the time of dua, the place of dua, make the right dua, try to stick to Quran and Hadith, don't make the, the wrong dua. They say Abu Muslim once bought an animal, his wife said, Ud Allah, make dua to Allah that Allah must put barakat in it. So said, Allah ma barik lana fiha, Allah give baraka. For ma touch, so that animal died. So because you're gonna, baraka can have a lot of meanings. فَشْتَرَ أُخْرَى So he bought another one. So he said, oh, well, make dua. Allah must put barakah in it. He said, no, قُولِ اللَّهُمَّ مَتِّعْنَا بِهَا Allah, let us benefit from it. Allah, benefit from it. So, likewise, the friends of Allah, we need to be careful. We don't take the badwa of the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the dua goes straight to the asman. They say Mutrif once had an argument with uh, a person and that person lied and he made stories about it. So Mutrif said, In kunta kadiban, if you are a liar, then may Allah remove your life. As he said that the person died on the spot. So the case went to the seniors and they said, No, we need to take it to mahkama and there's a claim and he killed him. So the question was asked, Did he beat him? Did he harm him? Did he do anything to him? All the witnesses said no. So the, the judge, the Qudwat said, Da'wa to Rajulin Saleh. There was a dua of a pious person. His dua confirmed to Taqadir. There's no punishment. So when you're the friend of Allah, be careful not to trespass the limits with the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the friends of Allah, don't need to ask for dunya. When there's a need, they'll ask for it. They say a few people were traveling on the ocean. The ship was being tossed. So people started crying and screaming like the plane when it starts shaking now. You think so it's going to crash. Somebody said, hey, there's Ibrahim bin Adham. Ask him. Ask him to make dua. So he was sleeping in one corner of the ship and he was covered by a shawl. Not least perturbed of the condition. So the friends of Allah also, when the plane is shaking and, and shattering, and the pilots making an announcement, we don't know we're going to land. The friends of Allah are much mind. They're making their record and doing their amal. So they came to him. He said, please make dua to, for Allah, make dua to Allah to save us and protect us. So simple dua. Allahumma qad araytana qudratak. Ya Allah, you have showed us your qudrat power. Fa arina rahmatak. Allah, show us your mercy. And the water subsided and everything came back to normal. So dua will make the impossible possible when we have Allah. And when we don't have Allah, then the possible will become impossible. They say that uh, in the time of Muhammad bin Suleiman, there was a blind lady and she got a vision. So somebody asked her what was the situation. So she said that uh, I spent the entire night in Ibadah and I made dua. Ya kashifa durri ayyub. Oh, the one is removed the difficulties of ayyub. Ya man rahima shaybata yaqub. Ya Allah had mercy that Allah had mercy on the old age of Yaqub al Islam. Ya man radda Yusuf ala Yaqub. The one who returned Yusuf al Islam to Yaqub. Oh, that Allah returned to me my vision. And she said, as I said that, my vision returned. So even if it's the smallest things, Abu Rayhana was in the ocean and he was busy sewing and his uh, needle fell in the ocean. So he said, Ya Allah, I got my work to do. Please return to me my needle. And the needle came back on top of the ocean. The needle returned back on top of the ocean and he took the needle. So dua, let us work on this dua. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me and everybody else to fit to make amal. The amal for today is Going off the grid, saying low profile, keeping distance from people. So Saad ibn Abi Waqas was busy with his uh, camels, his son Umar came. When he seen him, he said, I seek refuge from this rider. So his son said, 
you busy with the animals, with the nas, you deny zauna. People are fighting and debating about kingdom, and there's disputes there. So Saad knocked his hand on his chest, and he said, "Uskut, silence." Sameet Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam yaqul, "Inna Allah yuhibbu al-abd. Allah loves the servant. Al-taqi, a pious, muttaqi, scrupulous person. Al-ghani, a ghani, an independent person who has kanaat." And he's contented with the risk of Allah SWT. Al-Khafi, a person who is low profile, undercover, far away, not worrying about what the people are doing and not engaged in khibat and other things, but he's doing his own thing. Wa akhiru da'wana, anilhamdulillahi rabbil alamin.